Good day, I'm Stacey Ann Smith, and this is your GIS News for Friday, July 24. The International Monetary Fund, IMF, has voiced support for Jamaica's move to repurchase billions of dollars owed to the Venezuelan government for oil under the Petro-Caribe arrangement. It was announced yesterday that the finance ministry successfully raised two billion U.S. dollars on the international capital market through the issue of two new euro bonds. The bulk of it, 1.5 billion U.S. dollars, will be used to purchase nearly three billion U.S. dollars of Petro-Caribe debt, representing a discount of nearly 50 percent. The rest goes towards general budgetary financing. In response, IMF Communications Director Jerry Rice said the fund fully supported the transaction, which it saw as a proactive move to manage the country's debt. He added that the buyback would help to put Jamaica's debt firmly on a downward trajectory. The IMF Communications Director was responding to questions during a press briefing at the IMF's Washington office yesterday. Members of the public are being asked to continue supporting the police probe into the murder of Constable Lyndon Barrett of the Denham Town Police Station, who was gunned down Tuesday night. The urging came on Wednesday from Minister Philip Paulwell and Member of Parliament for West Kingston Desmond McKenzie as they visited the Denham Town Police Station. Minister Paulwell has been overseeing the national security portfolio, while Minister Peter Bunting is in Washington, D.C. for a series of meetings at the Department of Homeland Security. The minister acknowledged that there have been conflicting statements about how the policeman was killed. He, however, expressed confidence in the force's investigative process. I believe that the police will do their investigations and eventually the full truth will be told. What we are urging is for full cooperation of the members of the community um, to come forward with statements on what they have seen. The Member of Parliament agreed with the Minister's sentiments. We are saddened by the loss of an officer who was a friend of the community, who had a very good relationship with the community. As we have been saying for morning, we are hoping that persons who can assist in the investigations we are asking them to come forward with whatever information they can give. Minister Paul Well, meanwhile, extended sympathies to the policeman's colleagues and family on behalf of the government and pledged full support for the JCF. Foreign Affairs and Foreign Trade Minister Senator A.J. Nicholson has commended the International Seabed Authority, ISA, on its work towards developing a regulatory framework for the exploitation of deep seabed minerals beyond the limits of national jurisdiction. Minister Nicholson pledged Jamaica's support for the authority's efforts to reach an agreement on measures to avoid any possible negative environmental consequences from the exploration and exploitation of marine minerals in the area. The minister was speaking at the second assembly for the 21st session of the ISA. It started in Kingston on Monday and wrapped up today. Recent land use management assessment done by the Forestry Department has revealed a 0.41% afforestation rate. Afforestation in the sense that areas that were once forested were coming <coughs> back into forest. Yes, and areas that were non-forested, like abandoned agricultural lands, were now reverting to secondary forest. The latest data is in contrast to the 0.1% deforestation rate assessed in 1998. But the Forestry Department remains concerned about the quality of the country's forest cover, particularly the disturbance of the broadleaf forest, which has been downsized from 8 to 7.7%. And this is where we want to encourage persons to say, if we are going to be cutting trees for particular purposes, and it must be an important purpose, the least you could do is replant the area. And in these dry times, you are not supposed to be lighting any fires of any sort anywhere, and in particular, nowhere near the forest. And finally, the Milk River Hotel and Spa in Clarendon is set to receive major upgrading at a cost of over $56 million. Cabinet gave approval for work to be carried out at the facility by C&D Construction and Engineering Company Limited with professional services by Rivi Gardner and Associates. The work will include renovation of the west wing of the Milk River Hotel and Spa, including demolition, alteration, upgrading of electrical systems, floor finishing, painting, plumbing, roof repairs, and decorating. The infrastructure improvements and service expansion are to heighten the attractiveness and marketability of the world-class mineral spa. Milk River Spa has nine mineral baths, a mineral pool, and 20 rooms, 13 of which are operable. And that's it for GIS News Today. I'm Stacey Ann Smith. 
thank you for watching.